Hey folks, Father Sumbuti from CG Virus here. Uh, today we're going to see a very small tutorial on a shadow catcher in uh, Lux Core Render Engine for Blender. So uh, let's see the setup here. So we are using a um, simple stair here, and uh, this is the background, and this is a uh, um, yeah, this is the Susan, and we are using uh, Hemi Sun for driving our HDR, and there is a Sun for external light okay so uh, let's go for this guy and uh, we're going to create a new material here simple new material and uh, this will be our shadow catcher right so let's go to new and let's name it shadow catcher and uh, this is the matte material here by default so let's go to advance and let's go to shadow catcher okay so now what we need to do is basically go to the camera and uh, let's go to image pipeline and use transparent film okay now you're seeing your shadows all right so let's see some stuff first so press f12 to render it and you will see uh this is the bounce light it is giving so if we uh turn it down a little bit something like this you'll see press f12 and it will give us much more darker value so for accuracy uh, what we should do is basically we should use something like a uh, good value something like uh, 0.8 something so let's go for 0.8 there we go press up 12 and uh, yeah it will give us much more strong bounce light here so okay so now let's see the compositing so uh, we want to use our denoise passes for these compositing pipelines so what we can do is basically we can go here in the view property and we're going to check albedo here and uh, we're going to check um average sharing normal here and other things are pretty much fine so yeah so now let's go to compositing and uh, let's use note shift a render layer and uh, let's go here and here is our viewer note okay so if you want to create a denoiser version of it what you can do is basically go for a denoiser denoise check image here and uh, average normal and albedo and you will see the denoise version here okay so let's go to uh, let me check let's go for this guy as well so this was our background so I need an alpha over here and alpha over and I'm going to um, give it to the top and bottom I think we need to swap it let's see yeah we need to swap it there we go okay so now you can see that uh, our denoise version is making all the diffuse channel but the problem is um, I mean the RGB is denoised but the problem is um, we are not uh, getting that alpha okay it contains some alpha and which is actually not denoised at, uh, as well so let's go to image and let's see so this is the RGB and you can see this is the alpha okay so we need to create an alpha denoiser as well here so let's shift D and let's get a denoiser okay so the alpha is now denoised uh, separate RGBA input channel here and now we're going to combine it again so this will be our combined RGBA and uh, this will be I think we can go for this guy as well yeah okay so we're using a denoiser here uh, it already contains the alpha if you want to see it um, this is the alpha without any denoising and that means that this denoiser is not making any alpha here uh, alpha denoised here so we are going to give it another alpha to denoise it and now what we can do is basically we can uh, combine all of these passes here so it will be R and it will be G and it will be B and this will be alpha okay so now we have all our setup here so what we are doing is basically we are uh, taking this RGB denoised version here and we are denoising the alpha with this 
and we're combining it all together okay now if we go to the alpha over here and uh, we're going for this instead of this there you go now you'll see the thing okay so that's how we can work with it so now let's see the advanced one where we need to separate uh, this shadow catcher from the object let's see first of all let's give this guy a uh, motion blur okay so what we can do is basically let's go to the camera and uh, let's select this motion blur check object camera and I'm going to shadow frames of one and two okay so uh, that means the steps are two so now let's select these Susan and go to the Susan go to the object property and check motion blur okay so now um, if we press F12 it will say yeah no render found so let's do the composite and uh, we're going to create a composite node here which will actually render the whole node setup here with this node setup so there we go now you will getting you are getting something like that so press F12 to add 8 and here we go okay so now we're getting it okay all right so now uh, let's see the advanced mode so let's save it and I'm coming back so for sometimes what we need is basically we need to extract this shadow from uh, this 3d object so how can we do it so it's pretty easy we need to create a new scene all right a uh, full copy unfortunately the linked copy is not working uh, I wish uh, the linked copy was working but uh, it's not working so we're going to create a full copy here and I'm going to name it shadow okay and in this shadow part what we're going to do is basically this will be visible and this will be invisible so to make it invisible what we need to do is basically go to this object property selecting all the 3d objects we have uh, in this case this is the Susan <coughs> here and I'm going to the object property and uh, we're going to turn off visible to camera okay now we're getting only the shadow part all right and if you want to you can go to the scene here and uh, disable uh, select this staircase and uh, go to the object property and uh, deselect the visible to camera so that means we have a 3d object and uh, shadow object okay so now uh, we can simply go to control s save compositing and uh, yeah we're going to shift D here and we're going to shadow and let's re-render everything F12 there we go so we have only this part and uh, for this guy uh, we have some motion blur that's why we're using the RGB let me check if the pre mult should be applicable or not let me see no okay yeah everything is fine all right and uh, this is our shadow layer so what we can do here is basically we are going to do the same stuff we did with these uh, part so press shift D yeah and uh, we're going to image normal and albedo actually it is not uh, needed but uh, yeah no problem and um, other things are fine so let's see let's check it yeah okay everything is fine so what we can do now is basically we're going for an uh, alpha over shift D and I'm going to uh, this will be a top and this will be in bottom let me check and yeah here we go okay so now uh, instead of this guy we're going to use this guy here okay and let's see the viewer note and there we go all right so now you can uh, suppose you want to color correct this stuff here yeah you can do it pretty easily um let me see let's use some curve RGB curve and let's do uh, contrast S curve so like this uh, we need to optimize this pattern here so option to pass open seal okay fine yeah now you can change your uh, codes here and there all right 
So usually what we do, uh, if you have these denoise passes, we should we should use another trick uh, that will optimize the stuff uh, stuff for you. Uh, what is uh, which is called the file output. Uh, we will discuss this later. So in this way you can cache your setup. Uh, so the denoise passes will be disabled and the cache setup will work. Or you can just uh, you know render out these denoise passes first, then uh, use EXR and uh, do other other stuff. So we will discuss it later. So yeah. So that's it. I'm Father Sympathic from CG Virus, and we're going to see you next time. Bye bye.